I'm Dr. Sam Money, and this is the Society of Vascular Surgery Briefing about hypercoagulability and arterial disease. Numerous studies have clearly defined hypercoagulable states that lead to increased rates of venous thrombotic disease. However, the positive role of many of these thrombophilic states as the cause of arterial disease has yet to be clearly elucidated. Numerous studies have looked at patients with peripheral arterial disease and found significantly higher rates of thrombophilic markers. The rates of elevated markers range between 1.5 and 21 percent. It is clear that atherothrombotic disease, i.e., the forming of thrombus on atherosclerotic plaque, clearly contributes to significant peripheral arterial occlusive disease. The most striking evidence for a role of thrombophilia in patients with peripheral arterial disease involves those patients with lupus anticoagulant and the associated anticardiolipin antibodies. In a large series of patients with peripheral arterial occlusive disease, lupus anticoagulant was present in 4% of these patients. That is versus an expected prevalence of under 2%. Data has suggested that patients with this marker will result in a higher failure rate for interventions, which may be over three times higher than patients without such defects. Less striking evidence has been put forth suggesting the role of other hypercoagulable states having an association with peripheral arterial disease. The most common risk factor in the population is hyperhomocysteinemia with a range between 5 and 15%. The cause is most commonly the MPHFR gene. Previously, many patients with elevated homocysteine levels were treated with folate and B12. However, the results of that treatment have not proven to reduce future problems. Presently, treatment for patients with hyperhomocysteinemia includes a suggestion only to treat patients who have severe hypohomocysteinemia. Their levels would be greater than 100 micromils per liter. Despite some suggestions that protein C, protein S, and factor V Leiden imbalances all lead to an increase in venous disease, no clear-cut evidence has led to a significant indication that peripheral arterial disease is affected by these genetic states. In short, only lupus anticoagulants and severe hypohomocysteinemia have been shown to clearly increase the rate of peripheral arterial occlusive disease. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.